Welcome to my sewing room. My name is Robin and today I'm going to show you how to make this peekaboo quilt. I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to make this one right here. The back is cotton and the front is cotton and I use flannel for the inside. This is one I made years ago. This one I made with cotton on the front and flannel on the back. And make sure you stay till the very end of the video. I have some tips and tricks at the end on how to sew this quilt. So let's get started and I'll show you just how easy this is. Okay, to get started, I bought one and a half yards of the top fabric, one and a half yards of the flannel for the batting, and one and a half yards of the backing fabric. And this is cotton, this is flannel, and this is cotton. And then what you wanna do is cut 20 squares of each fabric and each one is 10 inches by 10 inch square. 10 inch by 10 inch square and 10 inch by 10 inch square. And now to get started, this is how you're gonna layer this up. You're gonna take a flannel piece and lay it down on the bottom. Then you're gonna take your backing fabric and lay it right side up. And your top fabric right side down. So your backing fabric and your top fabric are right sides together with the flannel piece on the bottom. And then you're gonna need a circle. My circle is eight and a half inches. And let's lay this in the middle and then take your friction pin or whatever you want to use to draw with. I like this because it erases with an iron. Trace your circle in the center of your square. There. Now take a, a pin and pin the center to keep all the, the three layers together like that. And now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew all the way around the entire circle. Okay, I'm gonna start with a 2.0 stitch length and I'm gonna put my needle in the center with the red dot on my foot so I can line up the line that we drew for the circle with the red dot to make it easier to follow. And I'm gonna do needle stop down so that it's easier to go around the curves. So fix stitch or back stitch in the beginning and we're gonna sew all the way around. Before we get all the way back to where we started, I always want to clip my threads so they don't get into a knot. When we get back to where we first started, we do a back stitch or a fixed stitch. And let's head back over to the cutting table. Okay, we finished sewing all the way around. Remove our needle. We're going to take our pinking shears and we're going to cut between one eighth and one quarter inch away from your stitch line. Okay. Now you're going to need a six by six inch square. Okay, we're going to take our square, place it directly in the center of the circle so it's even all the way around and we're just going to go a little bit above the square right here and make a little line that's about an inch and a half just a little line above that and so we just drew this line about about a half inch away from the square and now we're going to pull this fabric away from the other two fabrics like that. Make sure it's just the one. And we're gonna take some scissors so that we can take a little snip on that line we just drew. And just cut on that line. This is gonna be where we turn our circle right side out. So we're just gonna clip on that line and use this little space now to turn our circle right side out. 
There we go. And now I'm going to take a chopstick to go in here and just press out those side seams. Like that. And then just close back in that little hole we made. Okay, after we have it all turned right side out, we're going to give it a quick little press. Okay, now that we've got it all ironed, we're going to take that six by six inch square again, and we're going to place it parallel to the little cut line that we where we cut to turn it right there, if you could see that. Okay, we're going to line up this square even, so each corner is touching the edge of the square. like so, and make sure it's parallel to this little cut that's going this way. Okay, and now we're going to take a an erasable, my erasable friction pen, and we're going to trace. Okay, we've traced our square all the way around. Now the, this line becomes our stitching line. Now we're gonna take our two circles, and we're gonna match up the wrong side to wrong side like this. But in order to make sure it's straight, we're gonna put a pin right here in this, in this corner and match it to this corner where those two lines intersect is where I'm pinning this to match that corner with that corner like that. And this corner to this corner where those two lines intersect like that. And that way we know we have those lined up perfectly and now we can take another pin and pin all the layers together like that. And then we can remove those pins that we used to line it up. And now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from here to here. We're not going to sew on these other lines yet. That's when we add more rows to our quilt. But this first row, we're going to sew all these together. And then when we sew them together, that's going to create that little flap here, which I'll show you. So go to the sewing machine. We're going to do a back stitch or a fixed stitch. So all the way to this end and back stitch or a fixed stitch. And let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, I'm going to remove that needle and we're going to do a straight stitch directly on that line. I'm going to line up my needle with the red dot and the red dot with my line. Do a fixed stitch or a back stitch. Move that needle. stitch and we're done. Let's head back to the cutting table. Okay we finished sewing just right here on that one flap and you can see by doing that that's going to create this beautiful little flap here that starts to create those little flower petals or the window um, border whatever you want to call it. So now all we have to do is take another one and line them up wrong sides together, marking them with the pin like I showed you before, and just sew your circles together. And then just place a pin to hold all these layers together. And you can remove the pins that we use to mark the corners. And if you open this up, you'll be able to tell, see that these lines match up like there and there. So now we're just gonna go to the saw machine and we're just going to go like this and sew right here. And that'll create a flap here. And so you wanna do your rows. You're gonna do five circles in a row. And then after we get a five circles sewn together, then we're gonna sew these flaps to the next row. 
Okay, I've already sewn two rows together. Just kind of finger press these open. And now, since we've sewn one, two, three, four, five circles together, that's one row, this is the second row. And now we're gonna match these up the same way we just did these rows. We're gonna match them. These little flaps up like that. And we can go ahead and put these right, I mean, wrong sides together. And go ahead and flip this to the back. And now we can just go ahead and pin all of these now, and then we can just do one seam all the way down. We're just going to go to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew all the way down connecting this row to that row and if you want to check you can bring it back around and you can make sure that these drawn lines are matching up this line with this line this line with this line it's all matching up perfectly so now we can just go to the sewing machine and sew all the way down Okay, we're just going to do a straight stitch and line this up. Do a fit stitch. And I like to do a back stitch on this quilt just to make sure it's secure. Move my needle. Just sew down this line all the way down the row. Just make sure your flaps are open. Okay, as you're sewing the two rows together, make sure the flaps are flat here and underneath. Make sure these are open and flat on both sides as you're sewing the rows together. Okay, we just finished sewing these together and just finger press these little petals open wrong side to wrong side and we're just going to match these up just like we did the other row and sew this all the way down and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to sew these flaps down okay I finished sewing the whole thing together all four rows, one, two, three, four. There's the front, there's the back. Now I'm gonna take it to the ironing board, okay? I'm gonna bring this over to my ironing board. I'm gonna mist it with some water. That'll help press this. And then we're going to press these down and we're also going to fold these over on that line like this. So just go through and press all these edges forward like this and press down all these little petals and then I'm going to show you how we're going to top stitch these down. Okay to get started stitching I'm going to do a blanket stitch but you could do a straight stitch or you could do a zigzag stitch whatever stitch you want. Uh, most people do a blanket stitch um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here on the petals and I'm going to do the blanket stitch around the petals. And, and then the last thing I'm going to do is fold down these little flaps on the edge of the quilt and, and do the blanket stitch on those last. So right
right through the middle of the flower into my next petal. side of the quilt I can, do I can just pivot and turn okay I have needle stop down where I can pivot and turn and now I'm gonna work my way back down this side of the pattern in the middle of the quilt. Now we're just gonna go hold the sides over like this and do a blanket stitch all the way around and then your blanket will be done. Okay, you can pin these down if that helps you, but I'm just gonna fold them over because I've already ironed them so the crease is there. So I'm just gonna do a blanket stitch starting right here. I'm gonna start with a fixed stitch or a back stitch. Just do that all the way around your quilt. Okay, we're all done. Isn't it adorable? I just love it. Here's the back. There's our peekaboo quilt. I just love the fabric I picked. It came out so cute. Have fun making your peekaboo quilt. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a so blessed day. Bye for now. Okay, I wanted to jump in here and give you a quick little tip. To make this go faster, I, I layered all the squares together and I drew the circles and then I, I drew all the circles and then I went and sewed all 20 blocks. And then after I sewed all 20, I went and sat down and watched TV and just and trimmed all of these at one time and in batches like this. And then I, as I was cutting these out, I realized if I turned it over, even though I can see this pretty well with the dark line, it was even easier for me to see on this side with the stitches. So it was easier to go in here and cut really close like that and see exactly where my stitches are with the with the thread color that I used. So I just wanted to give you that little tip that if it's harder to see with the print, then maybe turn it over and cut where the flannel is. So that was a lot easier for me. So I wanted to give you that little tip. And then after I cut all of these like this, now I'm going to go sit down and watch a show. I'm going to put my little square there and cut and draw and cut my little line to be able to turn these right side out. So I'm gonna go and do all these at once, cut that little hole for turning and to sit and turn them all, and then I'll come back and iron them all at once. And then I'll line them up for sewing. So I just wanted to give you that quick little tip. Also, I wanted to give you another quick tip because using these pinking shears are really hurting my fingers. And I totally forgot that I had this rotary cutter that has like a wavy edge or, or you can buy them with a pinking shear edge and just use this to cut around your circle. I should have thought of this sooner. Save my fingers and just go around like that. So whatever works for you. And also I have seen people use regular scissors to cut around their circles, but make sure you cut with like a one eighth of an inch close, close like this. And then you can use just plain scissors if that's easier for you. So pinking shears, a straight shears, or a rotary cutter with a wavy or a pinking shear blade. Your choice, whatever works for you. Okay, after you've, you've pinned the corners to match 
both corners to make sure that it that it matches you can just open it like this and you can see this line matches with this line this line matches with this line now you can go ahead and and pin through both layers pin through all the layers for sewing